right, okay, let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, my name is Ryan Selvey. Uh, you might have been here three minutes ago where I said goodbye, but now I'm back. It's not a replay. It's another episode of Offset. We're here for two more episodes today. Right now, I'm really excited. Uh, we're going to be having Troy Brown on the show, which I'm really excited to show you guys because I am a big fan of his work. I have gathered a lot of inspiration from viewing his reels and his work that he's uploaded online. And I know that a few of you actually are familiar with his work and his reel, but we'll be going through all of his stuff from um, his most recent to some of his older stuff to what inspires him and the uh, process that he has to create the work that he does and what comes next for him. Um, if you guys are tuning in from the last stream, it's going to be a very similar format. It is a question and answer podcast style. So if you have any questions as we continue through this episode, please throw any questions or comments you may have in the chat. If you're over on YouTube, make sure you're hopping on over to Behance. That's where all the conversation's happening. I can already see a few people like Steve and Annika, Fabio and Oliver, Umicorn, Wade. Thank you guys all for being here. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, please, by all means, let us know. Um, I don't want to dilly-dally too much, though, because we have an hour and a half to get through a lot of content, which I'm really excited to show off. Um, but uh, without further ado, I would love to bring in Troy. Hey, Troy. Welcome to the show. Good evening. How are you? Uh, yeah, good evening to you. I mean, it's it's just yeah, afternoon it's for me, but we do appreciate your, your tuning in. You said it was like 7 o'clock your time, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's yeah. like five past seven. It's a bit so, late. I just had my uh, dinner. I'm feeling full. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully it will bring up your energy for uh, for <laughs> a whole whopping hour and a half of nothing but nonstop motion. <laughs> um, but no, it's great to have you here. Do you want to just take the floor at the very beginning and kind of introduce yourself, what you're all about? Um, uh, just basically give you the give you the free reins of the mic. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'm Troy Brown. I'm sort of a motion graphics, um, illustrator, artist, guy, generalist, I'd say. I just do a bit of it all, really. Um, I'm uh, currently freelance, um, and I've not worked in an office since COVID began, which Ooh. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, because yeah. <laughs> I don't know I don't know how to talk to people anymore. Um, right. And I've got no concept of time. But um, yeah, everything's gone really well for me for the past year, I think. Um, past year, I started spamming Instagram um and yeah he's done he's done me in good stead i'd say um so great. yeah good year last year so i'm really looking forward to um what i'm going to be doing this year really now did you always know that you're going to get into motion design is that something that has always kind of been an interest of yours or is this a relatively new evolution um yeah it's i guess my career let's say is, is took a few turns because i've always you know as a kid i've always drawn pictures you know that was a that was a thing i've always done and was always like known for in the family you know you, i was the art guy the art kid right um and pretty good at art at school but um after that i went to college to do again art i think i wanted to do like graphic design and go down that route because i felt like that was a more um there was a vocation there you know some a little bit more tangible than right an artist i'd say um and then yeah i applied to do graphic design at, at the uni university I went to, but they were full. So they said, oh, I'll do this multimedia course, which was um, like motion design, um, web design, and all different types. I guess that's where they put everyone else. Uh, yeah. So, okay, that sounds cool. I mean, I've, you know, I always liked films and videos and animation and things like that. So I thought, you know, this might be actually better for me. Um, and then, yeah, I did really well on that, on that course. Um, and from there, I basically just went into motion design um, and then yeah. just kind of snowballed in a way until quite recently. I mean, predominantly it was motion design, but I think for the past eight months, uh, I've been doing more still work um, based on the designs and the, the style that I've kind of developed for the past year. So maybe less motion um, and more stills lately, but 
I, I still get animation projects, which uh, which is good to mix it up. Actually, it's quite nice to get paid to just do a still. Um, yeah. You know, because it's kind of like, oh, I've done the image now and it's done, rather than, oh, I've done the image and now I need to animate this thing and and do all the other stuff. So, um, rather than it just being the first step, it's like the step. <laughs> yeah. So it's quite good to have those two avenues. You know, where you've got the stills and then you've got the motion as well. So there's a bit of uh, variety there. So that's that's cool. Um, yeah. It also kind of sounds like that was also a bit of uh, an original trajectory trajectory for you as well. And the idea that you had this idea of a static um, career, and now you kind of have the freedom to either do static or motion uh depending on the job or what's needed for the project which is cool yeah definitely i mean i i do like to have a little bit of a break from the other one so if right. there's a project that comes up and it's motion and i haven't done any motion for a while then i will be more inclined to jump on that because i want to sort of i don't want to get too rusty um so yeah i think i'm i'm doing a motion one at the moment um and the last one i did actually was quite a good one and that was for the ITV World Cup sort of intro the, the, for, for each of the players. So I still get that work. I just get it um, not as often as I do the still work. Currently. Oh, it's, it's interesting to hear. I didn't, I didn't honestly go into that. I didn't really know. Um, but with that said, I would love to give the, the viewers a kind of taste of your work and um, to see kind of what you're all about as far as motion goes. So we have your reel here, um, your most recent reel. And let's check that out. Let's look at your work. Let's just try flying through this one really quickly. Very cool. Um, it's it's got a lot of great sound design to it. It's got a lot of great energy and pacing to it. Um, how long would you say it took to kind of put together that reel? Um, yeah, that reel is actually really old now. I just keep putting different logos at the start. <laughs> right, I'm a new one because um, I've got so many like good projects that I want to put in there. So that's it's quite so it's quite old. Um, but it, you know, it didn't take long. I think I've basically got a comp ready for uh the show reel so i'll just replace and and mess around with it as i go but it doesn't take long and you know half of it is um picking the song <laughs> like yeah. i spent ages going through um and just sort of trying to get the right song whilst listen, showing the sort of having the show reel playing um it's probably um un not very uh it's probably unnecessary but it's fun to do no i mean it's also kind of you know a reflection of how you want the uh, ambiance of your work to be consumed in. So I think that it, it plays a big part. I mean, and I think that we all have our own things that we overthink and kind of feel silly to us. But in the end, it, it all is a reflection of what you want to put as your best foot forward. And so I think it's a really nice fit of the song that you have. Um, it also has this feeling of collage in it because it feels like it's multiple instruments and beats and pacing. So I think it goes well with this kind of collage style you have. Um, I do have a question for you. Did you ever watch um, Angela Anaconda growing up? Uh, no, I didn't. It was this collage, this really weird collage. I don't know who produced it or who made it, um, but it was this weird collage TV show. And oh, it okay. is... No, yeah, sorry. Um, sorry. It's almost like a... I mean, excuse my insults if anyone worked on it. It's almost like a bad version of your art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. um because it has such this cool like way that it feels like things are really cut together and their animations are like different pictures that are made um and when i saw your work i immediately was like that reminds me of something from the 90s but i can't remember what it is and um 
you know, after finally like revisiting it, I was like, oh my gosh, like if if that show would have looked like this, like that would have been so much more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really weird that you know when I just searched that and I was like, oh, okay, that does. The the person who inspired me probably watched that and uh, yeah, <laughs> I took it off them or something. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. I might check it out. Uh, just well, like I said, it is it's very crude. It's a little upsetting. I remember like channel surfing as a kid and running into it and be like, what's going on? Right. Um, but there's so many things that you have in your reel that I think are really cool, um, like merges between like that was obviously kind of cut from a video, but then has turned into stills that then was then made back into stop motion. Um, where do you source a lot of the material that you get to incorporate into your animations? um what mainly from the client they will send me yeah. um a load of bits really and then i just got to do do my thing with them really um but you know if there's nothing if they've got nothing suitable then i'll just use a stock site adobe stocks a good one or pexels or or any any really um i'm not sort of um loyal to any of them i'll just get whatever image uh, works and I'll, I'll try and work with that really um so yeah just stock sites if if I can't find something suitable. But what I do like about collage work is it is quite rough and ready. So you can tend to find, you know, find it in the weirdest spots. And even if it's not quite right, it can kind of it leans into the collage style anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that's one reason why I've really uh, sort of pursued the collage um, uh, aesthetic is because it is quite rough and ready. And I, I like to work quickly and see my re results as quick as possible so that that is why i tend to use that a bit more now uh how long have you been kind of in the class style was that something that when you were going to uni and then you took this like multimedia class was that something you had already kind of developed or is it something that has uh, evolved over the years no um i mean i can show you when we come to the sort of show me your work stuff i can show you my instagram and you can sort of see when i first started instagram instagram sorry i was um i had sketches you know things that i had in my sketchbook um and then when i started to uh, work professionally i did a load of vector things so it was all quite flat you know it was all that sort of that that look um so right. vectory, you know using duic and, and then things like that and that's that's what i started using so there was one project that came along and it's the it was like this um, black is a beautiful struggle it's called and i think that was like the first bit of uh first successful video i'd made and and that was collage um and then from there i've just sort of gone with that really and sort of every motion project or any inquiry has been to uh work in that style so it's kind of just gone from there really um, yeah i mean there are these really beautiful um like zoom ins that also kind of then are zoomed out it's like this this playing with scale um and i know this isn't the first one that you were talking about with um what do you say it was it, was it black is beautiful is that what it was black is a beautiful struggle yeah it's um yeah. it's might be easy to find on the on the vimeo one but oh, gotcha. um, but yeah that was the i think the first project where I, <clears throat> it wasn't trying to sell anything which was quite refreshing for me because i've just worked on promotional stuff and um corporate stuff quite a lot of the time which made me sad um yeah. this one it was almost like um uh, here's a script kind of do what you want with that and i think that was the sort of dream for me it was just to sort of have that freedom right uh, and then i just researched here we go so it's this one here um and again they sort of supplied the video of the main character here and mm -hmm. I sort of tried to find as much as possible to sort of mash them together and um it kind of resonated with me to work on when I was working on that I had the most fun as well because it it was really rough and ready and um I just sort of I was just like slapping stuff together it was really um I don't know I don't know how to describe it but it I, I just did I wasn't that precious about it you know every mm -hmm. piece it was just sort of okay that looks cool let's layer something else on let's layer it on and just work with um i don't know just the aesthetic of it really and but yeah. even like this is like you you made the choice to go in and obviously you like cut out the head and you blew it up a little bit more um which kind of adds this uniformity to a bunch of the other clips that you have where you also have enlarged the head um 
and then you kind of go in and you also have this distressed text, which is really cool. Um, you said that now you were using Duik in your earlier career. Are you still finding ways to kind of use Duik as a character animator now? Or is it um, that something that you don't really have in your workflow as much? Yeah, I don't have that in the in my workflow as much. I, I just don't do much uh, sort of character -y. I mean, in this, there's some Duik stuff, I think. This guy right now walking out here. Right. Um, which is the dodgiest walk going, but um it was one of those where i was really precious about like getting this um a decent walk um yeah. which i did not achieve but it kind of was fine because no one cares about uh your walk cycle except for other animators and yes this was it, this was more sort of um just for anyone to watch and no nobody has said oh that walk cycle is a bit a bit funky except for one of my animator friends um so <laughs> which like thanks there. pal appreciate it <laughs> yeah well, that was it. And um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying there. But um, yeah, now so I will also, um, if you don't mind, I know you have a lot of texture in here and you have um, obviously a lot of different ones. They're even like animated texture as well. Are these all just as separate layers that you have as like track mats? Or did you use any sort of plugin to apply texture to all these individual objects? No, um, I mean, I tried to use is it ray dynamic texture um, i just got that one i've been playing around with yeah I, 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 for some reason i always find it like really fiddly so um mm -hmm. i just sort of probably just masked it um or track mapped it or um had it an overlay or something like that as opposed to using ray dynamic tech for some reason i just couldn't get my head around that one so mm -hmm. um yeah i don't really tend to use plugins really um except for ones that I've kind of not built myself, but you know, when you've got a sort of uh, an effect preset that you, uh, that you can save, I tend to do that a lot more than use a plugin, but in fact, right. there is a plugin that I use a lot and it's uh, it's motion. Uh, oh, right. Yes, of course. Yeah. And that's great for like creating nulls. It's really like basic stuff, really creating nulls. nulls. And also um, I use a lot for uh, moving the anchor point. <laughs> Yeah, there's that and sort of copy and pasting keyframes over multiple layers. Um, I mean, it's stuff like that that I use um, and having the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the, the, what is it? The curve controller. Oh, what's yeah. It? With the ease and everything. Yeah, the ease thing. Um, yeah. I use that a lot. Um, but yeah, plugins, not, uh, yeah, I don't tend to use them that often. Now, I'm also noticing with like the animation, like you'll see that this, um, this character is smoothing like off very smooth, but then you kind of have this jittery uh, stop motion feel to some of the objects. Mm -hmm. Did you work in like 30 frames per second for everything and then just kind of add keyframes to this? Or do you remember if it was like an adjustment layer where you were um, like posterizing time or whatever? Yeah, well, I, I think what I was doing here was probably working in like 12 and a half frames a second. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember there was like a there was a, an art director for the entire project. Um, and once I sent my first version in, one of his comments is, is he would like like to have seen it a bit more smooth. Yeah. So uh, at that point, it's not good to know that they want it in thirty frames when yeah. you're doing in twelve point five. So it was it was a bit stressful. So I just made the main com thirty frames a second. And so any sort of camera moves, I think, were. 30 frames a second, but all the animation contained was at the 12.5 or even 6.25, which was um, quite weird. So you can see those sort of bits moving around there. They were yeah, like these guys 30 right frames a second. You know, it was a bit of a mishmash. And if I'm completely honest, um, I kind of lost um, the continuity with the, the, the frames, to be fair. And it was just like, oh, okay, whatever works. Um, but, but playing with the idea of collage and this idea that you're bringing many things, different things together, I to me, it felt intentional and it felt like a piece that was meant to kind of have these different um, yeah. collaborations of different frame rates and, and scattering and staggering, which I thought actually added a lot to the piece. So it's yeah. one of those happy accidents. <laughs> 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 so it's certainly intentional then. I'll just take that. But I mean, yeah. that, that, I, I think that's kind of why I don't like to be too precious about stuff because... I think you can get something out of the accidents. And I think that was one of the accidents completely. And um, there, there's one in this, you know, the the kid get coming out of the sort of uh, the, this part here. Mm -hmm. um, see, there was meant to be like a, a head here that he came out of. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. 
and I, I couldn't make it work and I kind of put it off and put it off and it was coming up towards the last day um, and I was like what am I going to do here and then um, I sort of recalled in the script he's talking about revealing a mask and it's probably a bit of a uh, a designy um, in joke because obviously he's, he looks like he's coming out of a mask as in right you know, a trap mask so I was like okay that works and I just left it so um, um, some people got that um, but maybe some don't but I mean, I kind of, I, I kind of got that. And again, that was one of those kind of mistakes, or mm, not really, um, yeah, un unintentional uh, win. You know, one of those. And uh, as far as some of these um, like hand drawn moments, uh, I, I'm assuming are you are you mostly cutting things out like in Photoshop and then bringing them in, or are you making like a bunch of different mats inside After Effects and? like manipulating them once they're kind of like cropped that way with a pen tool. Yeah. So what sort of element with this, the head or. So like you have the head, you have the, the, the hands. I mean, obviously like this is like a shape layer of swords. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you mostly are working just natively in after effects or like, are you creating this shirt in illustrator? Are you cutting out the shoes in Photoshop? Um, and then um, like bringing them in after effects. Yeah. I think that's probably how I like worked. It was quite a while mm -hmm. ago on that one. Um, but I would, yeah, if I was to do this again, I'll probably do it all in, in Photoshop and, and then, uh, bring it over to After Effects, but it was probably a combination, um, of all of those just to, just to get that. But yeah, that sounds about right. I think I would have done it in Photoshop and, and then brought it in. And my last question for this one, um, would be for these clouds that you have, are you also, um, frame by frame animating them in Photoshop and then bringing them over or? you yeah. finding a way to do this elsewhere no yeah i do those in um in photoshop i just feel that was the one that i sort of learned there are better programs i think for that but um i kind of liked having all the pens and i mean i've not explored anything else really i just sort of do what i know and whatever works um, hey it's working great i mean i love it um it all looks so good um and uh I, there there's parts of it that i was definitely using as inspiration when i've worked on different stuff of my own um just kind of like looking at it and seeing the different choices that you had made um as you also have this uh stories in place Mitch, uh mitchell's the bold you say this is the one that's the most recent um no it's not the most recent but um it was one that i sort of won off the back of that last one really uh, okay this is where i tried something different with uh filming a lot of it myself and sort of being on shoot which i've never done before um which was a lot of fun actually we we did this in one day um and again another accident about this was that we went down to film it um just to get the sound because it was just going to all be an animation like the last one okay um but the the camera op uh a friend of mine he said oh let's just film it and let's just see what happens and then from there we put this cut together where it was a mixture of film and animation i think it worked better so again it's one of those unintentional things that really just add, added a bit more to it than we expected. Right. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to do that one. And it's cool to yeah have them complement each other. And like, I know that over here, um, as this transition, you went straight from kind of this ripping and folding, um, or I guess it's more of just like a, a painted mass that you kind of expand. Yeah. Um, it, it it all feels so cohesive and all like the, you know, they are, they're meant to be kind of in the same universe, which is really neat to see. Cool. Um, I think also a really other strong part of this one and you use actually in your reel uh, was the spinning of this car because you managed to take something and make it feel very 3d uh, in this 2d environment. Um, but it still feels like it belongs in the same space, which is really neat. Yeah, I think that was a Cinema 4D. Um, oh, was it? Oh, wow, cool. Little car. Um, but yeah, I think that, that the idea was to just keep it in the style of. And I guess when you, you're mixing sort of shape layers, paint the textures, um, uh, and photographs and, you know, collage, it's quite easy to put stuff in there because none of it, can't, well, right. I mean, it, is, it, it is all co cohesive at the end, but it's because everything, everything else is so different. So yeah it wasn't too too difficult to do that but yeah it was uh, an enjoyable one that one i also really like in this one um it just passed now it was you had a candy wrapper um 
And so everything else kind of has this static texture on it. But within the candy wrapper right here in the center, you have like a movement of these circles kind of as the shape slightly moves, but everything else, like, you know, you have these which are static and married to the shape, but this one, you know, you have that extra layer of something moving within something else that's moving, which is on top of other <laughs> things that are moving, yeah. um, which just add a lot of energy to the piece, which is really cool. Again, I think that was a mistake as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's all, I mean, that's why I feel like a, an imposter a lot of the time. That was a mistake. I think I, I definitely designed a lot of that in Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I was using, oh, what's the, it's not, um, you know, when you fill uh, something, you know, when um, uh, one of the. Like an alpha mat or something or. No, one of the layer effects, um, you know, a pattern layer. Oh, oh like content aware fill? I added a pattern. That was it. I created my own pattern, which were the dots. Okay. And I applied that to some of the elements and when you import that into after effects you get some funky effects um such as the you know that pattern kind of slowly moving on its own um so that again was an accident for sure i know that no oh, i mean I, it's one of those things it's like i it, it's the, the chaos of just something that comes naturally to you is it's really cool to see that it's just um it's things you're like oh yeah it just kind of worked out <laughs> yeah i know it's, it is um it's, it's quite scary really because you kind of I kind of want to force errors in a way just to give it a bit more um, I don't know some spontaneity I guess that's what what, what I'm trying to go for um, right so when you're trying to f force that or you kind of want that to happen um, it can be a bit, a bit scary when it doesn't yeah um... And, and to go along in the vein of um, kind of like your approach to projects and um, how you're uh, manifesting these different solutions, uh, I think that's a really good transition for one of our segments, which we have uh, see what's in your sketchbook. Ooh, what's in your sketchbook? So um, you went ahead, you um, sent along a piece of your research document, which I thought was really cool to just kind of see um, your process and how you approach these different projects. Um, and the first one you have is this Bob Marley Zimbabwe uh, document that's filled with different inspiration and videos, um, write up says to like what the, the mission is. Do you want to talk a little bit about your process and how you create these when you're approaching a project? Yeah, sure. I mean, this project, I don't think went went ahead. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I was comfortable sharing it because it was all it's, it's never been seen. So it was quite nice to give it a little bit of light. But um, yeah, so I'd would, I would normally be given the song um, and the, the concept, uh, you know, like a brief um, overview from from the client, let's say of something that they want to go for. And then I would just listen to the song on repeat, like, <laughs> like so many times. Um, whilst looking at these sort of images that you see here, um, a lot of the research and just really immersing yourself in the song and what gels once you're looking for the sort of research imagery. So with this, um, I knew it was going to be a video. So I tried to find as many sort of animated bits that were suitable as well, just because this research document, it's not only good to show uh, the client, this is kind of the direction we want to go, but it's good for you as well, because it's, uh, you're kind of like really immersed in the research a little bit. So yeah, I will, when I'm working on project, I would have this sort of document open all the time and just be like scanning up and down and just sort of getting these little ideas or little inspirations from, from all of them. And if they're moving, then that's even better because it's, um, yeah, fewer steps to take in your, in your head as you're trying to develop ideas for them. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So now where do these normally live? Do you like hunt these down for each individual product and then they live right here? Or do you also have like a folder on your own computer where you kind of go and um, keep things that you then later organize into these research documents that you have? No, not really. I mean, I'll just go on there. I use Pinterest a lot for, for this sort of stuff because I, I don't know what the algorithm is, but it's it's amazing, you know, how you can sort of, how they can link another image to another that seems unrelatable in their content, but they'll be matched in color or um, tone or something like that. But anyway, I use that quite a lot because 
you can go down the rabbit hole a little bit. So you yeah. find one thing, it will kind of lead you on to another, another, and another. Um, whereas if you're uh, looking for um, a specific image, then Google image search is probably the one. But I think Pinterest, again, it throws up some happy accidents sometimes as well. So um, I think, yeah, I think you're on um, like the style frames here. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad it didn't go ahead because this is all like a roto plan. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine having to roto that all. Um, but I was quite happy with those. It's quite different from uh, the style that I've been putting out. This is, I think, about two years ago or maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and it's quite nice to explore a different style. And yeah, I was quite, quite pleased with some of those um, style frames there. Now, I know that you said that you were classically trained originally as like a uh, hands on drawing and, and creating static pieces. Uh, when you're creating something like this, are you using a tablet or using an iPad? How do you bring these shapes onto the screen? Yeah, I just use a little whack on tab. Um, it's like this, you know, I don't, am I like visible on the camera? Yeah, you're visible. Yep. So it's just this thing It's just this. Um, it's like the smallest one, probably the one of the cheapest you can get. But um, for the stuff I like to do, it's perfect. Uh, I'm, and I don't think I'll get the big one on my desk without interrupting mm -hmm. my setup a little bit. So, yeah, this has been a bit of a godsend, actually. And then are you also using that when you're kind of cutting out pieces for your collages and um, yeah, the, the creating masks or what, or what have you? Yeah, I mean, I just use the... When, I mean, for all of that collage work that you see, lately on my uh, Instagram. I just use the lasso tool and, and this thing, yeah. And, and that's it, really. Um, I, I see more and more artists now are really kind of using the lasso tool in, in so, new ways that I, I didn't initially kind of expect it to. Um, I mean, I guess just in that regard, they're, they're using it to fill shapes and make um, like weird patterns out of them. Uh, and I think it's just one of those tools that once you kind of get rid of your reservations as to what they actually are used for, I think you can actually make some really cool stuff. And I think that that comes through a lot in a lot of the ones that you also create, which is cool. Yeah, I think you could spend quite a lot of time with the pen tool, I guess, cutting stuff out and making selections, but it just yeah. takes way too long uh, for me. Um, I just pr much prefer to just... Uh, again, with the accidents and trying to force errors, that I'm more in, in inclined to sort of do that a little bit more than being like super precise and cutting out the right, you know, exact shape that I want to go for. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can. Oh, this is the research document for the Black is a Beautiful Struggle um, one. And this is, I think this is probably the first time that I got to go into the, you know, the, the, I described that research and development process on that Zimbabwe one. Mm -hmm. I think this was the first one when I did did that sort of level of um, image research and and like pre-production, um, and I really enjoy this stage. I think it's it's the most chilled, it relaxing part of it. You know, except for when you've got to actually start creating assets. That's yeah, and then doing. once you actually have to take it from the <laughs> yeah, that you oh, pulled, <laughs> yeah. um, obviously you don't want to rip anybody off or anything like that. So it's 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 a hard balance really because you sort of immerse yourself in the images that you see but you need to create something new and that not just a replication yeah yeah there's something there that's so cool but um yeah it's a fine it's a fine dance well one of the things that um is is coming to me now is there's so many pieces of popular art that have this collage style that i have kind of just put into the regular um i don't know saturation of of just consuming media like I didn't even think about Tyler the creator or I think about you know the weekend with um these album covers which I've seen so many times and then you know I see them in your mood board for the final piece that you have for black is a beautiful struggle um and then I'm like oh yeah like there there totally is that overlap there is that connection mm -hmm. so it seeing it now I can definitely see where you pull inspiration but never when I was watching the initial piece was I like oh this is just this is just that you know yeah, yeah. with a new face it, it 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 feels like its own and it seems like you really did a great job at just grabbing inspiration and creating something that is something unique to you which is really nice yeah thank you I mean that is the hard part I think is is that exact thing just sort of extracting um the essence of something without 
you're just copying it and because there's no yeah it's all always about pushing something a little bit further but um you know how successful you are in that is it's not necessarily determined by you it's by other people but yeah there's um and this is where i found i think that is deborah Rob, roberts that you've got there and she's an amazing sort of um collage artist um, yeah and that really got me into sort of her work as well it's also really cool like here in this one when you see me how she has um the different like exposures and skin tones and using them within the same faces like you can see that i think these are two different images that are just similar enough that she kind of overlaps to give you the idea of this turned face but then that's black and white and then this is obviously color mm -hmm. um but it all still feels like the same person yeah. um and it's just it's 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 like you you don't realize that it's gonna work until you do it and then when she puts it on the page you're like oh that's so smart <laughs> yeah you know? for sure and um, i think those sort of cutting the facial bits being cut out and being a bit disjointed you can sort of see that you know the sort of image there on um the, the sort of the guy with a flat cap yeah there's sort of blue tape i mean you can just see uh that in my work i think now is sort of like just ripping up bits and just having it quite rough and having there it not be as polished as as what you would normally find i think yeah but i mean that also goes back to like the man in the suit that we had we saw earlier on your on your instagram with the the zoom ins and the zoom outs um and kind of still creating like a balanced structure even though it doesn't like theoretically make sense mm -hmm. um as far as like there, there's no way I'm going to pull up real quick. Um, there's no way that like this man would be able to function, oh, with, right. <laughs> you know, a giant jacket like that and the giant hand. But um, even though his whole head fits in his hand, it still feels um, it still feels great. Also, shout out to Adobe right there. Hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did something for them, actually. Um, if you go down a little bit on the Insta, uh, yeah, on the Insta, you can see. I think it was the first time they actually forced me to do like um, um, uh, a narrated video, which I've never done before, which was uh -huh. good. Um, it's quite far down, actually. If you can. It's so it's that one, the guy on the skateboard. It's like that hot pink color on the right hand side. Yeah. So that was that was something with Adobe UK. Um, That's really cool. Which, and now, then, are these hands from the same image, or are these from two different like sources that you? Because it looks like you added whatever text, like texture or shading, goes from like here to the left to give the illusion of depth. But was it already like that, or did you add something to make that happen? Um, no, the the photograph um, of, of the figure was everything but the head. I mean, that's just a different head that that was on the original photograph. Um, I. For some of them, I combine pictures, and then for some of them, I'll just use that picture and sort of push it as far as I can. So you can see there, he's got a different head completely. Wow! And even like blank, uh, bringing up the size of the of the watch is uh, something I didn't even expect, or I didn't I didn't even track until I just saw you do it now. Or I'm like, oh yeah, that watch is way too big for that hand, even if the hand is enlarged. Yeah. Um, and that's just from. You don't you don't even necessarily have anything go into that. You just like see something like, oh, it'd be cool if that's bigger. And then you just kind of experiment with where it goes. Uh, kind of um, for some of them, I kind of I, I like to try and fill that the square as much as I can with mm -hmm. um, the the pose in a way. So I'll try and like pull as far as the image would <laughs> permit, like pull the, the trainers to be as like wide and thick as possible. And, you know, the you sort of back there and try and really get that to the corner of the image and you know just like really try and pack the the square full of uh the photograph in a way that's right that's kind of how I, I start that off but i do like to make the the, the the figures have like quite small heads and long like chunky arms and quite big fists and, and chunky shoes and legs um and that is basically just how i'll start and then yeah i'll just keep working on it until just refine yeah. refine 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 yeah and then at the end i, I kind of wasn't happy with the head so i just replaced it for a different head uh, <laughs> that wasn't that didn't even come from any feedback or anything you just decided that you didn't like the face on it yeah yeah i just didn't like how he was sort of staring at the camera really i was like yeah oh, it's not really it's not doing it for me so 
Um, no, Paloma over in the chat says it's really dope. Um, and Reverb Mike says, I used to do this with scissors in old magazines. And yeah, that's why I, I think that's the really cool thing about it is knowing that you've done so much of this digitally, but it feels so physical and it feels so like analog and, and traditional, um, which is not necessarily easy to pull off when you have all of these tools at your disposal with blending and manipulating. Um, so I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think I use Lasso, uh, Lasso and um, uh, when you sort of got the, uh, I can't, <laughs> see, I probably use about two two or three tools, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I don't know the names of them. And that's what we've established. <laughs> just you just know, like little like the icons for them, just because you like know where to get them from. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much like that. I've never really been overly technical. Probably more than um, you know, just the, the a random person. But yeah, I'm not right. overly technical at all. Um, I think that's also a really good um, transition into one of our segments we have, which is um, I didn't know that was there. What? I didn't know that was there. So with, I didn't know that was there. Um, that is just kind of like a little highlight as to a, a piece that you use a lot in your own work. Um, is there something that you rely on heavily um, or you have in your workflow that you could not live without? Um, yeah, I think it might be this, um, the, what, you inside or outside of the Adobe software? or Yeah, inside in, in, in Adobe, whether it'd be like Photoshop I... or After Effects or... I think the, the Wacom tablet. Um, mm -hmm. I used to resist the tablet because I just could, I couldn't work like that because I, I think I was so used to drawing with a pencil on paper in front of me that doing yeah. that and controlling a mouse that I wasn't look. I mean, I just couldn't get on with it um, until the project kind of forced me into it. Uh, Which project was that? Um, it was one actually that I worked with. Um, it's one of my uh, inspirations for one of the segments later on um mm -hmm. but i've i uh really inspired by a particular artist um uh, from the design studio Podenko. um i've it's if you looked in those research documents he's in all of them because i just loved his work <laughs> um and I, I think yeah i must have channeled him in some way or another because i was uh got the opportunity to work with him on something um he saw he must have saw I was copying him or something. <laughs> so it's oh, like, really? No, no, it wasn't that. But he got me in on a project, and um, it kind of just required it. And I just, I just went, I just went to the shop and, and got them, got one. And that's kind of where it really started for me, and where I am now a little bit. So um, yeah, and that's all sort of down to the freedom and sort of how quick I could work with the whack armors. Um, uh, and it seems a little bit more hands-on as opposed to using a mouse where you're kind of like clicking and, you know, it's, it doesn't seem like natural. Whereas the, the pen right. type, once I got used to it, um, made it a lot more, um, it just seemed a little bit more tactile. No, that's great. Um, I think that is also a really good um, transition that we have uh, and to talk a little bit about your inspirations because there um, is one really cool that actually my friend Kendall um she's actually one that introduced me to your work she also uh put you in the same vein um as a piece that you also sent over so i think that's really cool that like the two exist um but let's check that out uh after we do an intro to some art talk So you mentioned um, Blink My Brain, which uh, I think is really cool because, like I said, that was one that um, there was actually uh, a crossover with your work. Um, and let's I'll just make sure I, I can't remember if there's any cursing in. I don't think there's any cursing in this one. I'm looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. We're good. I can play it. <laughs> um, and uh, this one is it, such a, a beautiful collage piece again um and an idea uh but i mean i guess i don't want to talk about it because it's your inspiration uh do you want to talk about why you include this as part of um your inspiration yeah i mean it's it's kind of clear to see really um 
how close my sort of work has become to this sort of style. Um, I don't know. I think it was the, I think this probably and the Podenko work that really pushed me into the collage work to begin with. Um, and I only came across those when I was researching for uh, the project. So I didn't have, that, I wasn't that much that aware of them beforehand. And then once mm -hmm. you sort of see them over and over again, and then you um, check out the websites and you sort of find um, their work, it, it was just like, okay, I just want to do stuff like that. It was like <clears throat> multimedia. It was a bit, I mean, this is like mega clean, whereas my, I think yeah. mine's quite rough. Um, this is like super crisp and clean and um, a lot more measured. And whereas mine's like, yeah, it's just nowhere near, near that. But I mean, well, I'm I, a, I, I'm, I think I'm, you're hard on yourself, but um, I mean, I can see, you know, there's obviously two different creators for it, but I, I, I think that there's a lot um, to be taken away from it. Um, and there's, a, there's, you know, a lot of fluidness to a lot of these shots um, that I, I'm really interested to find out how they do it. Um, but you were looking for inspiration for the um, original video that we were looking at um yes yeah i was probably just looking around and then just sort of immersed myself in their work a little bit more and it really just grabbed me as um just a fun way to approach it because like i was saying before um i was doing a lot of vector flat work which is fine but um for some reason that really just it grabbed me um, because i could use photographs and I could be a, a little bit more um, playful with that and, and not spend too long on assets because I used to sort of um, be quite precious about creating the assets and then it just takes so, so much time. So much uh, time. Yeah. Um, it's great if you're working with someone who's developing assets because then you can sort of concentrate on what you're, what you're doing. But um, yeah, there was just something about collage that that I got from that piece that was just really fun to work with. You could sort of use all the tools as opposed to some. But, um, yeah, that was that really. Yeah. And speaking of the vectors ones, I know um, that you mentioned uh, in, in front of your inspirations that you um, also really like uh, Frank Miller's work, which I think uh, is is telling to the idea of this vector and this shape based uh, creation. You, you sent over this this cover in particular. Mm -hmm. um and so have you um actually seen the movie sin city i have not actually oh have you not no i don't know i, mean, I don't think i was that familiar with his work um until after i watched the, the movie really because yeah. i think when the movie came out um i was like what is that that's so striking i was it was, it's probably one of the my favorite films because it is so different and striking and the color work and the composition it, it's incredible and then i i found out a little bit more who, who sort of did the original comics and then it kind of went from there really and um you got the character marv who was incredible i love that guy um and it was yeah it's just that brutal style that he had and it's quite scary almost but it's so high contrast and the high contrast part is something that i really try and take into my work um, yeah it's contrast 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 and all this in city like that's even a thing without even i've seen the movie i've seen parts of the graphic novel but um as far as the movies go i mean it has such an iconic look and it, it just it's like someone just took the levels and just like split them as far as they could you know yeah. um, um, and i always cool thought oh they should make more films like that and i think they made a second one um and then it was oh did they really they made a second since yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize they did that um i don't remember what it was called but yeah there is another one and it's like no we should probably should have just left the left it at the first one but just leave it untouched <laughs> yeah but 300 as well i really love that film um uh, for the same reasons really it was something completely different to what was out there um and again that was a frank miller uh comic too um but but yeah that guy yeah is mike is saying um there's good teeth in this piece and it, it is interesting because it's like it's very untraditional approach to how you would do the teeth generally and i think that that's one of frank miller's actually even um strong points is the unconventional simplification of things where yeah. you don't necessarily think that it would be that way to make it that easy to make it work with the contrast but then he does it and you're like oh okay yeah sure that works <laughs> you yeah. know that's um, it i think he tries to do as little as possible in a way and you it's almost like the the black um does quite a lot of the work in a way it's almost about what you don't see um uh -huh. 
and a lot of it's to, yeah to do with lighting and sort of like long shadows trying to cover stuff up and um and maybe if you you know finish those teeth let's say they would have been way too distracting sort of draw away from another element or it's probably a bit of a, a balance for him as he was working on that but yeah incredible steve agrees that the second movie is not so good uh but the, the first movie is a great movie um and then your last piece that you also um sent over was uh i believe it's a mo like it's a motion agency or is it just one person for Padenko? do you know um it's just the one guy and this was the guy that i worked with but i think he created one of the one of my most favorite uh favorite motion graphics pieces so i worked with him on the if you go back to that main the main page oh yeah sorry see here um because it was also crazy to see like things so it's always interesting when i'm popping around these and i'm like oh this is this came from this person for that and then um yeah. right right here he's got the uh full selection so the one of the top left that's the one that i sort of i helped design some of the characters on that one um, mm -hmm. and i don't know if you can imagine like i've been following this guy's work for for years and using a lot of his work for my mood boards and then sort of finally get to work with him it was a it was a great it was a great time and once again these textures are the such a cool part of it of like the idea that there's this moving texture even though it's so subtle underneath of all of it um kind of still gives this idea like there's no texture real here but then the texture of this blue just really adds a, a sense of life to an otherwise static yeah. feel um and then I, I know we were talking a lot about cutting up faces earlier too. Like this is still has that same sort of vibe where they've it since they've cut up a face and made so many faces into one face, it, it makes you think that it's standing for more than just one person, you know? Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's what it was. I think the story was quite about quite a few people. So that worked um, on that level of sort of having different parts of different people, let's say, um, in these characters. But yeah, so I worked on that one, but he created one of the one of my most favorite character pieces uh, like that I've ever seen as well, which was the drummer. If you go, if you've got time anyway, if you go back. Yeah, we, we got time. We still got like, a, I think like uh, 30 minutes left or so. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the I mean, if you look at this whole page, you can see this guy is incredible, really. Um, let's see if I can find this drummer one. Um, oh, he did stuff for Green Day. That's pretty cool. Um, Dean Martin. Oh, the drummer, experimental. Wow. Um, I mean, it might you might need sound on that one, but um, it's uh, yeah, it's fantastic, and you can sort of see where I've grabbed a lot of my inspiration from for my characters and sort of even the proportions. Oh, that was that was smooth. The, the move from the like the scaling of the both the hand and the seat, like that is sick. That's very cool. Yeah. Um. And I'll but also include this uh, this link in the chat for you guys if you guys want to listen to it for with some audio. Um, but so cool to see, like even yeah, as he hits the drum, how the lines like move within their structure to to show impact. Yeah, and the, the camera work is, I I love this thing. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Do you generally find yourself? I know you actually. I meant to ask you that earlier. Um, you mentioned about like camera movement. Do you normally use the artificial virtual cameras within After Effects, or do you kind of just work within compositions? Oh, actually, yeah. So most of the time, I use Duix. Uh, is it two D camera? Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, I think that's really good because I, yeah, I don't like tend to use three D layers in After Effects. Um, yeah. For some reason, they, they, it was just quite fiddly to me. So. Um, and I kind of like to preserve uh, a lot of the capabilities of After Effects. So with the 2D cam, is it a 2D camera? Yeah, I think it's a 2D camera. Um, I don't know what it's official, like the official name of it or whatever, but it, it, that is enough that I could associate the two, you know? Yeah, I think, yeah, I use that one quite quite often, really. Um, it, it Yeah, it just works for me a, a lot better, I think, especially for like parallaxing stuff and and moving around I think yeah there is a limit to that camera but I don't tend to sort of push that too far yeah. so that, well, that works for me more than um, uh, the 3d setup in, in After Effects cool all right well we are about an hour into our show we have about 30 minutes left but um just as we've been talking for a bit I want to give you a little bit of a break 
Um, and we're going to do some monkey paws. <laughs> So if you guys um, are familiar with either Offset or you're familiar with um, uh, Anna Davis Court's stream, you would be uh, familiar with these little monkeys down here that are helping you um, get your your tendons or whatever, I guess, your, just your wrist muscles all relaxed and stretched out for you. Um, Troy, I'm going to give you a, a second to breathe, too, uh, unless you'd also like to do uh, the, the things as well. You're welcome to do them as you'd like. Um, but these are just a four different exercises that you have that, um, allows you to go and just do these whenever you can, while you're at your desk, you're waiting for the train. doesn't really matter. Um, and, uh, it, it's just a way to take care of our wrists and our hands because they are the things that we're using all the time, especially if you're using like a tablet. Um, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to reach towards the camera like this. And then you're gonna bring in your hands, uh, bring in your fingers, and you're gonna go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Only works with sound effects. Thank you, Anna. Um, and for that one, you can normally actually feel it kind of run up your, um, run up your arm. Obviously, you don't want to do anything that hurts. So if anything hurts or aches at any point, please stop. I'm not a medical professional. Um, so the first one, you just go like this. Bring them in. Ooh, ah, ah. Then you release. You want to go down like this, bring them in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. That one I always feel like right here too. Um, from there, when, once you release, you're going to flip over, give away the monkey paws like that. Bring them in, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. release. And then last but not least, you're going to put them towards yourself. Bring them in. Oh, that's the one I always feel the most. Feels great, feels good. And then you just shake them up. So <laughs> Oliver says no pain, no gain. Um, no, no pain, no do. <laughs> no pain, no continue. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna do it again real quick. You can do this as many times as you want. Um, I think like the real goal is to do it like, I don't know, maybe three or four times. Um, Normally on these things, though, I just like to do them like twice or so, just because I feel like one, a lot of people have seen them, and two, like you can do them on your own time. Um, but they've been really helpful for me. Normally, whenever I do them on these streams, um, I always kind of feel better the week after, um, just because then, uh, then they're all stretched out. But it's just important because during COVID, uh, during lockdown, when I was doing a lot of drawing, when I was doing a lot of, um, uh, we were talking in the last stream too, like even like video games and stuff. Um, it, it was, uh, it was just something that it's like after time you, you, you wear down on your wrists and you wear down on your, um, you just, your ability to continue um to constantly use the things that keep you employed so just do them whenever you when you can um it's uh just a matter of self-help and 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 health and yeah let me know if you guys do them i see that Khaled said that uh they did them and that's always good to hear um so we've got about 30 minutes left actually more like 25 to be honest um but one of the segments that we do have is um from this to that when we look at some of the older work of artists and then we kind of compare it to where it is now um troy was kind enough to send over a reel from 2019 which you might be like it still is 2019 but now 2019 was now four years ago so um you can sit on that one and see how that feels but let's do our segment called from this to that <laughs> From this to that.
Sick. Well, welcome back, Troy. Good to have you here. Um, so obviously, one thing that I immediately take away, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, is your um, your strength of vectors that you kind of had back in the past, and it feels very vector based, whereas now it feels very collage based. Um, is when you look at it, how do you feel when you're looking at your older reel? Um, yeah, I feel like I, I probably don't feel like I have improved that much uh, technically. Um, I guess it's just the experience of um, uh, the projects and sort of working your way through projects I've got more experience with. But when I see that, I, I see technically I've probably not improved <laughs> that much. Um, but it, it was nice to do um, a lot of the Vectra stuff. Um, um, and I probably will go back to that, but I think I try and combine it all in, in somewhere or another. Um, but yeah, um, I, I just shared with you like my older showreel from 2015. I don't know if there's going to, that might have a, um, a, a bigger skill gap. Maybe you want to check that You want to check that out? Is it cool if I pull that up? Yeah, go on then. I've, I've sent you that link. Um, all right. it's, this was like early when I was like two uh two years in maybe all right let's see i gotta make sure that i can present to um uh sorry i should have found it earlier oh no nothing to apologize about we got your screen i want to make sure that i am sharing audio um here we go with screen one share that bad boy got it and oops Messed it up with the thing. Let me just fix that. We'll do a little full screen. And let's check it out. There's a bit of a gap there. Uh, it's quite hard to watch, really. That one. <laughs> you know, it's so wild. I was like, because I can still see you down on the bottom when when that's still up and, and going. Um, and it was just I just see you like physically pained and like yeah. <laughs> and, like shaking your head at things. Uh, that that one was quite hard to watch, and I think that's just because you sort of you're told to do a style, and and obviously I was pretty new to it all anyway, and um, yeah, and you're sort of given a style to do. Um, and then when you see it, it just seems really uh, just against what you would normally do. Um, so, yeah, that one's quite hard. And like I say, it was so long. I think that the first show reel was around 40 seconds, and that's kind of the sweet spot. And then that one's like, okay, when's this going to end? <laughs> well, I think another thing to be said about it is just the idea that just like any other industry, there are hundreds of trends that come and go. And there's different style points that you think that maybe, you know, um, universal and they may just stick around forever. But then, you know, you look at them with a little bit of distance and you're like, wow, yeah, that looks like very 2015. Um, and and it, it's the things like if I were to pull up my own reel as well, like same sort of vibe. It's just like we all continuously move forward and evolve and adapt and it's it's kind of cool to be able to see your stuff in 2015 that looks 2015 and then look at your stuff now which is i think very i think it, it deviates a lot from what i see everywhere else um so you not only have you managed to increase your skill but you've also been able to like 
amplify your voice and your branding and your style, um, which is a little bit more timeless than any sort of trend that might, you know, occur mm -hmm. as part of the public zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. um, Khaled says, are you? Uh, are you? We all feel the same way when we look at our past work. And yes, I feel I feel like we have to be kinder to ourselves. Um, it's very easy to be hard on yourself for past work, but it's also exciting to like look on your past work and then see how much you've grown. That said, um, I would still happily work with someone um, that had your old reel. Um, you know, obviously for different needs, um, but it, it is cool to see and inspiring to see that you know you can continue to really become next level professional um as long as you keep working with it and you keep to it which is nice yeah, definitely um is there anything as of late that you've been working on that you're kind of excited about that you've been um in the trenches for as far as um projects and things that you have coming up um mm, nothing that i'd be able to share at, at the moment I, <clears throat> I think it was my only first proper day back yesterday and it was it was a hard day. I don't know if yeah. anyone else. It was really hard. I'd just been drinking and eating too much and, and not doing any art. In fact, to be fair, I was doing quite a bit of Instagrammy, my own stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I was doing quite a bit of that. But then when it's sort of paid work, it's you have, it's almost like a different mindset that you need to get in. And yeah, you really have to uh, force yourself to get in the mood. But um, one project from last year that I was really it came at the very end of the year um, that I was fully swamped with was um, that if you go down a little bit more, it's the Raheem Sterling there. See the England football kit. I'm not logged in. Oh, God. Um, <sighs> Give me a second. <laughs> if I switch over to my Chrome, maybe it'll be more forgiving of it. Let's see. Oh, let me in Instagram. Let me in. Yeah, you know that I'm logged in because we got that dark UI. That's what we're going for. Um, all right, here we go. Oh, cool. And also, I like this uh, effect that you have on top as well with um, kind of like this halftone uh, oh, silk screen print vibe. Yeah, this one was, um, yeah, this had, as, had me and my uh, friend pretty busy. Um, we had to do sort of a... a the five second collage clip for each player for England and um, and Wales. So I think in total it was about a hundred and something clips. Wow. And we were to provide that to, in this case, ITV. And then before the match, they sort of picked their starting 11 and then they would use those clips to create a montage based on whatever they picked. So we had to have all the players ready. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, that was an amazing one to work on really good i mean the access that we had to get the sort of the kids pictures and all the different video clips and and the freedom to just sort of do something um that i actually thought um for like a mainstream consumption would have been a bit too crazy mm -hmm. in, like too all over the place but yeah it's had some really really good feedback on on this and it I was never really a, a football guy, but he actually got me into football. And <laughs> no way. So yeah, did you watch the, did. the World Cup was... recently or whatever? Sorry, did you watch the World Cup then recently? Yeah, I mean, I watched it because th my work was going to be in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Matches, <laughs> but um, for the first time ever, I knew like every player's name and uh, and things like that. And when I was watching it, I was actually into it a bit more. I, I, I mean, I saw all the kids' photos and. I actually felt like, you know, I, I knew who they were a little bit more. So they were easy to to watch and, and support. And yeah, I got into football from off the back of this. And yeah, again, it's incredible. Now, I mean, um, when you're gotcha. dealing with such a large uh, repository of, um, of of footage and content, is there a particular way that you approach handling all your content? Like, do you divide up into folders? That you have or do you kind of just tackle the timeline and then whenever you you like suddenly need a headshot you begin to then go and just kind of hunt through the files that you have to find a headshot yeah i guess yeah my file management i guess isn't hasn't been that great but for this one it kind of it had to be because there were so many different clips right um, and one good thing about this was the the clips didn't come in at the same time 
um, they had to source them and that kind of so they had to drip feed me the clips so as they were passing them down i was putting them in the right folders and sort of working on them um in that way sort of bit by bit as opposed to being bombarded with all the files and then having to sit through and, and rearrange but so do you use placeholders ever then like are you are you kind of like being like eventually once they get me this footage this will go here um or is it more kind of like a puzzle piece where you go and you're like okay well these kind of look like they fit together and these look these fit over here and then in the end they kind of all just attach <laughs> no not really i mean like i said they were sort of giving as they was given uh, as the assets we were working on them so mm -hmm. um the idea was is that we would um just uh, basically just do the ones that we had assets for rather than yeah. creating a lot more work with placeholders because a lot of that were a lot of them were masks um and you it's you can't really placeholder mask uh, a masked video let's say so I was just doing them as they came in. Um, luckily, luckily, they was quite spread out. But I think the last day we ha we had to do like ten in one day or something. That was a bit of a bit of a push. But I just made sure I had assets for each player. Um, sorry, a folder for each player's assets, and then there was a folder that had all the head headshots in. So they were in a separate folder. But I was working with someone, uh, a friend of mine um just over dropbox and it was like it was just it was so simple because i think we kept it so organized yeah um no yeah. i mean i feel like that's that's the the beauty of the beast you know it's like the idea that you have to kind of work with someone else and then it suddenly like it has a um you know connection to, to to new file structures new ways that you approach projects mm -hmm. um and, and you know, and you, you learn from it and you grow and you change uh, how you work on your own products on your own time. Yeah. Um, by the way, over uh, in the chat, you, you're getting uh, lots of compliments on your work. I, I saw over actually on, on YouTube, Lydia was saying, truly amazing you are, bro, super proud. Uh, Mr. J was saying these are genuinely six transitions for advertisements. Um, Did you say that was Lydia? Yeah, uh, Lydia Brown. That's my sister. That's <laughs> oh your my sister. <laughs> oh, she was uh, another one of my sisters actually ringing me, so I guess they might be watching that too. Like, uh... <laughs> oh, fantastic then. So, uh, hello to the Brown family. Yeah. <laughs> Are you the only um, artist in uh, your family? Um, I would say the only one that's pursued it, but there's it all sort of came from my mom. She was um, a good drawer, and um, but no one's, not as far as I know pursued it and sort of got a career out of it but my sister's like um super creative and handy she's always like painting trailers and you know making things like that and um my nieces and nephews though i feel like they're gonna be really good because they've kind of grown up with it and it, it's quite nice because they do look up to me and that's that's quite nice and they can see it as um a possible career path because i think when i was growing up i was sort of always told um art or design wasn't really a prosperous career. Um, right. I think desktop pu publishing has completely changed that. Um, and obviously where we are with technology as yeah, it's completely turned that on the, on its head. So I was sort of happy to make the, well, I'm glad I'm pleased that I've made the, the gamble there and it's kind of worked out that. Yeah. But, I mean, to that point too, with the, with the idea of um, like desktop publishing, um you said that you within like the last year or so have really gotten to a point of um quote unquote spamming instagram uh you had a lot of growth this year obviously um do you feel like that was because of your cadence of how much you were uploading and how much you're creating do you think that it was closer to the content you're creating like what what are some things that you learned over the last year of like hardcore instagram um I mean, I last last um, December, not December last, but the one before, mm -hmm. um, I had lots of time off over winter um, planned. I was like, I'm, I've had enough. I've worked so much this year. I'm just going to chill But yeah. on professional work. But I was sort of itching to sort of do my own little things with this, the collage stuff that I'd been working on. Um, so I was just... just you know, trying to do something every day, not as uh, not even forcing myself. I was just finding myself doing stuff every day. And because 
I wasn't beholden to a client. I could basically just explore anything I wanted to do. Right. Um, and I was just in a flow. I was like really excited that I like was so close to having a style of my own, you know, that's what it felt like. Um, I was just happy to just keep working at that. Um, and I just made sure I was just putting it out and not being too precious about it. And like, oh, okay, this could be better, but I'm posting it, I've had enough of it. Let's let's do something else tomorrow. Um, so that's that's exactly what I was doing. And I've just carried on doing that. Um, I mean, a lot of these pieces don't, they don't actually take me very long. <clears throat> well, some do and some don't. Um, normally the ones that I've done really quickly get more engagement. It's, it's so weird. It's, I try yeah, not it's to never guess. the ones you expect, I feel like. Yeah. I try not second guess, guess anything uh, like reactions or how something's going to go down because I think that's, it's a bit destructive. Um, so yeah. I, I, yeah, I just try and get an output going on and just put that out. And yeah, it's been really good. It's, it's probably been the most um, successful year in regards to getting an audience um, and having a bit of, um, I don't know, individuality, I guess. And I'm so, kind of sort of see myself as an artist now, whereas I was a, probably a bit of a, um, just a guy who did the thing, you know, um, right. I don't know how to put that, but, um, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm sort of being approached for this style now, which is good because I feel like I've, I've honed it not on my own because I've used all those influences we've talked about, but yeah, it feels like my, my baby now that I'm, I'm sort of working with. So with that in mind, do you have a, like a dream client or a dream project that you'd really like to work on? Like, even if it's something for yourself? Yeah, I've got a few things actually, and I want to make a game. I want to make a. Um, I was I, speaking to you about it yesterday. I, I kind of want to, yeah, I want to create like a Streets of Rage type beat 'em up with this yeah. collage style. Um, and I, I'm actually really considering doing that now because I'm going to get some help with the coding um, with from AI. Yeah, um, and so we so were talking a little bit about um, Chat G. GPT, which is a text-based um, AI system where we're not talking about like Dolly, we're not talking about like Midjourney, we're talking about these new text-based conversation systems that you can go and you can literally type into it and you can say, how would I write an expression for this? And um, there are some different things with accuracy that they're, I feel like they're still troubleshooting, but so many of the times I've gone in there, I type something in and it like breaks down how you're going to use an expression and what affects what. Um, and I think that will be huge leaps forward for people like you and me who who don't necessarily know expressions as well as some of our colleagues or peers. Um, and that might help us actually kind of like catch up, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, yeah, I was messing around with the expression yesterday. I was sort of typing in and like purposely being quite vague, like, um, Oh, I type. I type pretty much this. Uh, can you write an expression that does that DVD menu screensaver where it bounces around? And that's yeah. what I put. And then it spat out the code, the expression for that. Um, and then I asked for a wiggle expression that collide uh, that collided with other objects in the scene. And I thought it's not going to be able to do that. And then it just spat it out immediately. So I was like, oh, this is going to be incredible. Um, so I'm going to try and use that in my next project the expressions that is but um yeah i think uh, regards to coding and in, in this game i think that's just given me a bit of a boost it's got me quite excited by that because any sort of skill gap that i have i might be able to get help from from this uh chat gpt um but yeah and fabio is saying a, a beat em up game with your style would be amazing it would be really cool to see especially um how your style kind of would then be reflected into the pals and slaps. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the little poofs and different textures you could use to have impact and reshuffling, yeah. um, I think could turn out to be really, really cool. Would you uh, imagine it probably on like a, uh, like a computer game or would you more see yourself kind of like in a video game world, play with a controller, or like, like a switch or something? um yeah it'd be great to have it on sort of the playstation or something like that i mean right. anything to it so this is like 
way in the future but yeah it'd be great yeah i know we're talking dreams i'm not i'm not trying yeah. to like solidify you and you know yeah. <laughs> now be like you promised me it would yeah. be on <laughs> where's the game <laughs> um, no that would be the goal but i guess i always like to learn things um so this is sort of helping me sort of get into uh well i mean when i was at uni i used to do 3d um and i've not done that for a while and i try and you know bring that in but yeah, I mean, he did it with that bus or that car, and that looked fantastic. It, it was very seamless. Yeah. So learning a game engine is going to be that thing for me where I'm sort of learning something completely new. I mean, right. on New Year's Eve, I was watching uh, tutorials on Blender. <laughs> like, as yep. the fireworks was going off, I was watching uh, tutorials. Because, uh, yeah, I think that's quite it's quite exciting. For me, it is, anyway. You know, when you start learning stuff that you, you don't know and... Um, so yeah, that, um, I'm going to do that because it's something new and I'm massively into games anyway. So it would be great to sort of try and see if I can get this style into a game because I've not seen it before. Um, no, I, I can't think of any other game that I can think of that has any sort of collage interface. Because um, yeah, even like, okay, so let's say even if you ended up going with vectors or something for the characters, even if the UI and the menu screens and the overlays were in the style that you have now, I still think that that would be really cool. I think having the style across the whole game would be amazing, but if that's not possible for whatever reason, I still think that there is definitely an avenue for this style in a video game, which yeah. I've never seen before, which would be really cool. Yeah. So it would almost be a bit like, um, streets of rage which is a it's a 2d side scrolling beat em up but um mm -hmm. something similar i guess i don't know if you've heard of tear away um it was a media molecule molecule game and and they played at, played with um the world being um, paper cutouts so that's mm -hmm. quite close to the collage element if you yeah look yeah. that up in whenever you like and uh, what you said it was called to get streets of rage and what was the other one um tear away tear away um and it was almost like little models and little paper things. And oh yeah, it kind of reminds me of like Little Big Planet almost. Yeah, um, it's, the same, it's the same guys. Yeah, but I, I feel like with yours, um, I could see there would be inspiration from it, but it, it still feels different enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably the only thing that I can think of that's got a collage or sort of papery, papery vibe. But yeah, yeah. my my game would be like super violent, I think, and. Quite <laughs> I've never never seen anything like that, so it'd be quite quite good to explore that um, over this year. Um, we'll just see where it goes. Fantastic. Well, we can find you um, on Instagram at uh, Troy Brown, um, and then we'll obviously stay keep our eyes peeled on Vimeo and what have you for all the other products coming up. Uh, it was really nice talking to you. Like I said, a fan of your work, so it's nice being able to pick your brain, and I'm really excited to see what comes next um thank you for taking the time to be on the show and i hope to talk to you soon yeah awesome yeah thanks for having me and thanks for everyone watching all right take care yep bye-bye all right guys that's uh, uh episode two of our three episode day um thanks again to troy for um tuning on late because i know like now it's like 8 30 his time or something um we have one more episode coming up with claudia um and i'm really excited to show you her work so we'll be back in about five minutes I'm going to play this thing and it's going to say go home. But guess what? Don't go home unless you already are home. Uh, don't go away because uh, I'll be back in just a few minutes. Thank you guys so much. Uh, save your work. Stretch. Do your thing. Thank you, Annika, for modding. You did a great job. You're the best. Love you all. See you in a second. still here it's over go home go <laughs>